how pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed, made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque, Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. We are gathered together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Steer up the will of your faithful, we pray, O Lord, that striving more eagerly to bring your divine work to fruitful completion, they may receive in greater measure the healing remedies your kindness bestows. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, In your vision, O king, you saw a statue, very large and exceedingly bright, terrifying in appearance, as stood before you. The head of the statue was pure gold. Its chest and arms were silver, its belly and thighs bronze, the legs iron, 
its feet partly iron and partly tile. While you looked at the statue, a stone which was hewn from a mountain without a hand being put to it, struck its iron and tile feet, breaking them in pieces. The iron, tile, bronze, silver, and gold all crumbled at once, fine as the shaft on the threshing floor in summer, and the wind blew them away without leaving a trace. But the stone that struck the statue became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This was the dream. The interpretation we shall also give in the king's presence. You, O king, are the king of kings. To you, the God of heaven has given dominion and strength, power and glory. Men, wild beasts, and birds of the air, wherever they may dwell, he has handed over to you, making you ruler over them all. You are the head of gold. Another kingdom shall take your place, inferior to yours. Then a third kingdom of bronze, which shall rule over the whole earth. There shall be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron. It shall break in pieces and subdue all these others just as iron breaks in pieces and crushing everything else. The feet and toes you saw, partly of potter's style and partly of iron, mean that it shall be a divided kingdom, but yet have some of the hardness of iron. As you saw the iron mixed with clay tile, and the toes partly iron and partly tile, the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly fragile. The iron mixed with clay tile means that they shall seal their alliances by intermarriage, but they shall not stay united any more than iron mixes with clay. In the lifetime of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed or delivered up to another people. Rather, it shall break in pieces all these kingdoms and put an end to them, and it shall stand forever. That is the meaning of the stone you saw, hewn from the mountain without a hand being put to it which broke in pieces the tile, iron, bronze, silver, and gold. The great God has revealed to the king what shall be in the future. This is exactly what you dreamed, and its meaning is sure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give glory and eternal praise to him. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. Angels of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. You heavens, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. All you waters above the heavens, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. All you hosts of the Lord, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt Him above all forever. Give glory and eternal praise to Him. Please stand.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, All that you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be? when all things are about to happen. He answered, See that you not be deceived, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not immediately be the end. Then he said to them, Nations will rise against nations, and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. My dear brothers and sisters, the good news of our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. In our gospel today, Jesus speaks again of the end of the world. He speaks of his second coming, a signal also of the end of everything. And by everything, he really means everything. And it includes you and me, lahat, lahat. He speaks of the temple as the reference point. Since people were adoring the embellishment of it, he says that this too will not be lasting, will not going to last. And because of this, a lot of people are concerned, kailan ba ito mangyayari? Kailan matatapos ang lahat? As the gospel goes, Teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? The question, when will be the second coming of Jesus, has been a question left unanswered ever since. No? Kailan ba? Actually, sa totoo lang, even Jesus himself doesn't know. Even the angels doesn't know. Only the Father knows. My dear brothers and sisters, for our reflection for this morning, I would like us to ask ourselves, is it really important for us to know when He will be coming? How is it that it is important to us? Uubusin ba natin ang ating panahon at resources para lang malaman kailan ito mangyayari? A lot of people may focus on knowing the exact time when the end will come. At times, no? minsan ba nga, no? we would be focusing on rumor mongering, no? listening to predictions. There is this parang Facebook fan page of a certain Baldwin. Parang pang aliw, no? pampalipas oras. No? umaandar yung pagiging marites ng lahat sa atin. Most does this mainly because of the fear of death. Dahil tayo mismo ang mamamatay. Even now, especially during the pandemic, there are a lot of uncertainties. We fear death because most are not ready to face it. And for us believers, we would like to be with God Dahil naniniwala tayong may Diyos, perhaps our final and ultimate end goal in life will be with Him. And this is through crossing a threshold called death. 
lahat tayo dito ay gustong makapiling ang Diyos. Pero ang tanong, sinong gustong mauna? Sinong gusto? Wala. Itong madalas na din sinasabi ko tuwing burol, no? How are we then to resolve and perhaps suggest as a solution, how are we to prepare for this inevitable? The answer, my dear brothers and sisters, is a bit simple. And for us Christians, this is to stay close to Jesus. Papaano? Don't just preach His message. Live it. Kailan? Saan? Here. And now. Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but today. Live life in the present. And for our reflection today, we are invited to check our personal values. How do we carry our concerns when we engage in our everyday dealings with the other? Is it a value of Jesus? Is it one of the gospel values that He teaches us? Anong pamantayan ba at sukatan natin ginagamit sa pang-araw-araw nating pamimuhay? May kulay ba ito? Dilaw ba ito? Pink ba ito? Red ba ito? Blue ba ito? O kay Jesus ka? In the end, knowing the exact time of the second coming of Jesus is, I guess, irrelevant. Because we will never know it. Si Jesus na mismo nagsabi. The same exact time of our death is also irrelevant. Because we don't know also when will it happen. That's why in this Mass, let us rather reflect and focus our give attention of how we can live today. Always today. Whether the Lord comes back ngayon, tomorrow, or hundred years from now, hopefully Jesus will find us befitting us to be called His disciples. We will be ready to meet Him joyfully because our value system, the very way we live, is His ways. In fact, we have become a Jesus to one another already in this very day and age. He is already here, living with and among us as observed by the very life that we witness to. If we are faithful to His precepts as Christians. Amen. Please stand. Coming together as God's people, we confidently bring our needs before the Father, confident that He will grant our request. In every prayer we say, Father, we hope in You. Father, we hope in You. That our pastors may totally dedicate their lives in preaching the gospel by their witness of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, we, we hope, hope in, in you. That parents and teachers may become living examples of faith to those under their care. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father we, we hope, hope in you. That we may try our best to do what is right. And may God's word be a living power influencing our actions. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, Father we, we hope, hope in you. That we may show compassion to the elderly, the lonely, and the sick. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, we hope in you. That the dead, especially Dr. George T., may find rest and new life in the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Father, we hope in you. Heavenly Father, deepen our faith so that we may grow in your love and always serve you with generous and sincere hearts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. stand. Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the sacred offerings, which at your bidding we dedicate to your name, and in order that through these gifts we may become worthy of your love. Grant us unfailing obedience to your commands. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, hosts heaven, heaven and, and earth, earth are, are full of, full of your, your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in, the in the highest. Blessed, Blessed is he who comes, comes in the name, in the name of, the of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, the in the highest. Peace near. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us mercy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not, not into temptation, but, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, and the glory are yours, are yours now, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, but say, only the word, say the word, and my soul, and my shall, soul be shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that those to whom you give the joy 
of participating in divine mysteries may never be parted from you through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Father Reggie Malikdem, our rector, we wish to thank the T family and the Metrobank Group for joining our Mass today as we commemorate the third death anniversary of Dr. George T. The GT Group Foundation and the Metrobank Foundation have been supporting the Manila Cathedral in its projects and programs these past years. Maraming maraming salamat po. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has been offered. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.